And next we have Winterborn, written by Stuart Gross. It is 274 pages, $3.50. It is not available on Kindle Limited, so going to have to buy this one. Uh, but here's the author's description. There are many worlds in the cosmos. Many of them have rules and laws that are likely utterly alien to the world that we know. Most never leave the world they were born into, never even know or suspect that other worlds even exist. Their souls simply go, sorry, their souls simply go through the cycle of reincarnation again and again, always forgetting their past lives and living as they please. But some few are given the gift of transferring after death to live their next life in a different world with memories of their past lives to enrich the world they go to with new concepts and new ideas and bringing back those same from the world they visited when it's time for their next cycle in the old world. A young woman suffers a tragic fate and is granted the ability to transfer. She is reincarnated into a new world full of monsters and magic and things that would be mere myths and legends to her in her old life. This time she promises will be different. She doesn't have to be weak here. She doesn't have to be a victim. She can be strong and no one will ever control her again. There you go. And if you read anything by Stuart Gross, um, he's written some dark stuff. Dark stuff with uh, sexual content. This isn't one of those things. Um, there's kind of a dark start to the story a little bit. Um, but overall, it, it it doesn't have any sex. Um, it, it's it's very much um, a, a very more, tra- I want to say traditional story, but it, it, it has some things that aren't in the dark side of what the author writes sometimes. Um, so I, I, I actually enjoyed it quite a little bit. Um, it's a good kind of tabletop little bit story. The female main character is transported to this fantasy RPG world that follows D and D specifically 3.5 rule set. Um, and the author talks about that a little bit in like a forward to this, to the, to the actual story. Um, game mechanic wise, um, the story is actually rather crunchy. Like there's tons of numbers in this thing. Um, and the act and the author actually shows the the roles he does for all the, the stuff he does in the story, whether it's combat or saves or skill checks. Um, the author actually shows the roles and and, and the combination of like all the her uh, main characters, um, you know, skills and and whatever else she has in there. Um, and so it's kind of fun to see the numbers roll out and see like, oh, this is a super bad role, and actually have it impact the story. And, and, and there's even one when the show where like the main character just has a series of bad roles where it's like, oh, this might this might end the story early. And even though I that, there's a good section of the story, I'm like, oh, because the the roles were bad there were actual negative consequences to the story. I thought it was really fun because in, in an actual table game, you make a series of bad rolls, your character just dies and you got to re-roll, right? Um, so I was kind of curious to see where this went, but there are actual negative consequences for negative rolls. Um, and it was kind of fun to see those. For people who who don't like as many numbers, you can kind of skip through past the rolls themselves and you still get a really entertaining story. Um, in addition to those things, you get, of course, um, item descriptions, character sheets, all the good stuff, and, then, and a, a nice character progression. It's actually nice to see this kind of home brewish class um, and to see the main character like really think through the process of character creation choices and also how she wanted to progress as she leveled. Um, and so it was the, all the game mechanics in this are done really well. And if you're familiar with the tabletop 3.5 D&D experience, um, you're going to kind of be delighted by a lot of the references that are made to this. On the story side of things, it's a kind of a slice of life story. It feels heavily influenced by the Ice Window campaign setting, um, which I first came into contact with when I was reading the George Stewart stories. Um, but there is also like a tabletop camping setting here um, for that. Um, it's called a different world's like name here in the story. So it's not like um, knocking off any any trademark names. Um, but you can definitely see like the influence of that particular campaign setting, which is really fun for me. That's definitely a plus. I'm not saying that's bad. This is, this is a plus for me. I like that campaign setting. I love those novels. It was kind of like, for me, um, it was a positive because I'd spent so much time in those other worlds already if a, like a very familiar world building experience, man, and I kind of enjoyed going back to that setting um, for me anyways. Um, overall, it's a good story. It pulls heavily again from the D and D tabletop experience. And if you like that experience, if you, if you, if you like reading stories and like filling those kind of like, Oh, is this dice roll going to go well? And if it goes really well, what are the consequences? If it goes really poorly. What are the consequences where I think you're going to enjoy the story. It's one of the things I like the most about it. Um, and again, if you also, also like that ice window setting, you're going to enjoy this. So for me, it's a solid 7.5 out of 10. Um, that's Winterborn with a score of 7.5 out of 10.